Moikka, olen Vataru. Tämä on kolmas desluentoni, mutta tällä kertaa ei ole, ei ole Suomessa. Uh, tervetuloa Tokiosta kaikille. Uh, koska 2010 luku on nyt loppu, halusin puhua siitä, mikä, mikä se oli otakakulttuurille. Uh, voin, voin puhua vähän suomea, mutta luennon tekeminen suomeksi on, ei ole helppoa minulle, joten uh, vaihdan englantiin nyt. Uh, so yes, welcome, welcome everyone once again. Um, I am Wataru Yam Wataru, um, and the my lecture today is titled "Rise of Yuri in 2010s: Origins, Development, and Reflection." So basically, I'm talking. I'll be talking about Yuri and the boom in 2000, uh, 2010s and how it um, how how the how the events lead to that phenomenon and what would happen next or at least the expectation uh so let's get started uh yes so, so in this section i'll be talking about uh what i want to talk about the sort of the introduction and explaining myself what what on earth i'm planning to do here um so if you google something like yuri and explanations uh, in English, after first lay of reviews on the episodes from the the Yuri of the season, um, you might encounter analysis or explanation on this genre or phenomenon made by authors familiar with sexuality studies, Japan studies, media studies, and anything in between. Uh, so these explanations differ in directions. Some focuses on how how authors are. Uh, lesbian authors are expressing themselves um, through through the work. Some might focus on its history dating back to Showa era, uh, I mean Taisho era. Uh, some might even deal with um, Yuri, um, sort of uh, R18 side of Yuri genre, if that if that's if that counts as a Yuri. Sometimes Google just thinks otherwise, and it, these things comes up because you know it's, it's it's Yuri on I state. Google is not. A good good platform to search things, but um, terrible terrible Yuri on Ice pun aside. Um, when I read through these um, explanations, um, I found things like authors mentioning things like these: um, Yuri as a media uh, medium for basically hetero male audience. Uh, phrases like predominantly male focus in Yuri publishing, and the concept became a uh, typical feature of Yuri aim is aimed at men. And yeah, and these these views are usually supported by the fact that um, Yuri works usually deal with a sort of has this uh, voyeuristic appeal. In other words, um, sort of the feel of peeping into say sort of secret girl only Christian school like Marimite or very famous works um, that that comes after that. And I can sort of understand the direction. Sure. Um, some Yuri characters often in, um, in, in some works of uh, some anime works, they are often depicted as sort of um, perverted, pervert characters. Um, and them doing things to other girls are kind of common sighting. Well, in some works at least. And it's as if the these kind of things, anime girls uh, sexually har harassing other anime girls is somehow sort of safer or somehow okay to depict in anime. It ain't okay. I I, I should I should emphasize that. But um, there were such trope, like sort of working as a loophole or having this kind of feel of thrill, and you can see that from these kind of images. Some of some characters are kind of famous. So, I think you get the idea. Um, even girl, uh, Lorikon characters seems to be on screen even recently, whereas such male characters are hard harder to find, um, in these days. And on top of that, Yuri works tends to be exp tends to tends to have this um um temporary um element. Uh, girls having intimate relationship in a cr sort of Christian girl school, but somehow graduates from such a relationship and goes on to live a heter heterosexual lives. Um, 
the, this sort of trope is there since the Taisho era when it when it when everything started. And pick any Yuri series, and it's hard to f hard not to find them, especially post Marimita works of two thousands and two thousand tens. Even recently, with Yaga uh, Yagate Naru or Bloom into You, um, you you see um depiction of um these kind of temporary relationship that happens in the school. Uh, this one is um episode seven, and this these elements are there. And these uh, voyeuristic appeal can certainly be found in these kind of um, the short compositions here. And maybe that direct explanation is true. But then I think these comments about the... Uh, these comments often focuses on man manga medium more than, more than any other ones. It's definitely the most numerous and accessible media. And... But then I think there's more to talk about when you talk about Yuri. And to me, um, they stop there and looking into the anime side of things are sort of at least weaker than the man um, de uh, explanation dealing with manga. And also um, the explanation on why, this, why the boom happened in 2010s are sort of weaker in, in a sense that the males just found this genre and jumped onto it. Therefore, there was a boom. Um, but then the question question remains as to why why then why now why in twenty tens and why how they how did they even get into this thing in the first place? But then you may be thinking this Yuri boom I'm talking about. What what do you mean by that in twenty tens? Um, Yuri definitely had an expansion expansion in twenty tens. Uh, starting with um uh, manga, a uh, lot of manga works dealt with these themes, and the anime adaptations of the manga library exploded in twenty tens. And certainly, the range of the the works and the depth of the works uh, expanded. And this boom was um. Uh, there were multiple factors that worked in conjunction to le lead into this explosion. Um, to sh to support my explosion things, I think I'll just flip flip through works of anime from 2010s: Citrus, Sakura Trick, Adachi to Shimamura, then Yuri Yuri, Yagate Kimi Naru, or Bloom into You. Um, the Blue Flower is it's uh, technically 2009, but hey, I like it. <laughs> And Strike Witches, Symphogia, Yurikumarashi, which I love, um, Kogaku no Pandora, and Madoka Magica, uh, Lilika no Nanoha, and Love Live, Yurukan, the Gochi Usa, Girls and Panzer, all that things. So these many, uh, many Yuri anime that I mentioned have vastly different directions. From normal school life to fighting with your magical power to driving tanks to fighting this monster thing with your magic magical aircraft looking things, it's quite wide. Compared to Marimita trope domination before, it certainly you've had have this range of um, works or the the themes that they deal with, and we also see a blurred line between um, the slice of life or Nichijoke genre and Yuri genre. Um, and it's up to you, up to who you ask to categorize any any work into either of the genre. And another thing to note is that while the exp expansion happened, um, there were um, major works of 2010s that worth mentioning, and and these uh, some of the works have um, these kind of elements. Uh, to I think the most notable example would be um, Madoka Magica having. Um, Sort of intimate relationship between Madoka and um, Homura, and have creating the the boom itself as as a work in twenty tens. Uh, yes, wrong slide. So with these um, background in mind, my presentation revolves around these two points. So discussing why male fans even started enjoying these works, and 
why that even happened in 2010s and what led to that event. Then I immediately have to explain this offer a disclaimer on limitations on, on about my perspective. Um, I did not have much time on this, so the coverage is li really limited, and um, the factors are sort of limited as well. And I focus on anime a little too much. And from a perspective, um, I, I'm a Japan I'm a Japanese speaker and also um, male identifying um, fan among the Yuri fans. So it might offer a bit different uh, perspective as from other um, explanations on Yuri. So context, super quick history, because I can't, I can't ex escape explaining history. So I mentioned um, the genre started around um, Taisho era and uh, and 1910s and 1920s with the shoujo novels. And there was the trope kind of developed during that time and it continues to be relevant these days. And the shoujo manga post-war um, um, brought in another wave of um, uh, works that deal with um, this kind of relationship. And with the Marimite in 1994, um, there was an increase in sort of the Marimite style, um, all girl Christian school trope thing, uh, reviving in, uh, in 90s and 2000s. Uh, if you want to uh, look, know more about the history, I think um, the video by um, Erika Friedman is more, a bit more thorough and more concise. So watch that. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's basically 120 years in a slide that will not work. But then, so what comes after that is to me, I'm characterizing the nineties and two thousands as the era of visual novels. Some of you might find it strange. So let me explain, explain this. Uh, yes. So nineties and, ten, um, two thousands in Japan, um, there was an online forum like me. Nichanneru. And during that time, visual novel flourished and the sheer amount uh, that it dominated the otaku scene, some of the very iconic manga, uh, iconic works um, were so um, became popular during this time. Because of the, the amount of text, this boom didn't really translate into um, outside of Japan, um, Japanese speaking market. And I, I'm seeing a sort of a trend in uh, visual novel popularity in the West just recently. This golden age of J in Japan was around this time. And in most visual novels or adventure games, in J as, as most Japanese, co Japanese call it, um, you're supposed to be basically sa the same as the protagonist you to and interact with the characters within the game. Um, depending on the game, you're trying to solve a mystery or Simply, simply be in a relationship with a girl, or um, basically um, identifying with the char main character in the visual novel. In such format, the protagonist must not have um, unique features. At least, it's not desirable to have them, uh, so that the the players can uh, identify themselves with the with the character. Sometimes they don't have visuals, even sometimes names. They don't have names. Sometimes they don't even have voice lines. Even if even if they have visuals, they might be like these. Okay, this isn't visual novel characters. It's from Reddit, Reddit anime, anime memes. But uh, I think you get what, what what I mean. Even eyes. It's interesting to note that they don't have eyes drawn, which is an the the most important part in anime style drawing. But then this golden age ends around to th around mid two thousands to early two twenty tens, with the advent of um, smartphones and changing environment. Uh, smartphones made it easy to to offer media that's ubiquitous in during in daily life instead of um, sitting on the computer and play games for some hours. And because the the visual novels required a lot of playtime, um, it lost out to um, more accessible format of um, games. And yes, 
So then, yeah, so outside of the dedicated fans, the consumers tended to look the other way from uh, a move away from the visual novel medium. And that got worsened because of the uh, situation worsens with the advent of Let's Play videos, basically showing everything that happens in the game. The whole point of the the visual novel is to read the story, so that's kind of kind of defeats the purpose. What comes after that is social social games on smartphones. This combined and popular features from different medium into a single app, and the the features include perpetual. Uh, it, it's telling a story that does not end for monies, basically, and to gain to gain the money. They they em employ the, the gacha system, which is notorious to basically exploit the play players and generated continuous income for the developers and and also character centric nonlinear narrative from the visual novels kind of um, work together with this system. And what's interesting is that with the smartphone's uh, device size, you can only show say two, three, maybe five characters at max at the same time. And this format is, I think, mo mostly co mostly shared among most uh, major, major social games, as, as far as I'm aware. Now, concurrent with the shift, the, the boom and the sunset of visual novels, there's another element of 2010s and 20, uh, 2000, 2000s and 2010s worth mentioning. Um, Kyoto Animation is one of the most famous anime studios of this era because of their um, insane production quality the unbear and the unbearable tragedy that they have experienced recent recently. Uh, most of you here may know at least one of the series from them, maybe Haruhi, maybe Keiong, maybe Chunibyo, or even Violet Garden, Violet Evergarden, but their origins are a bit different from what appears from the recent works from them. Kiwani's first um, major work they was um, the adaptation of Eroge, or some call it Nakige, from key visual visual arts brand. Uh, Clanad, Air, Canon were uh, the three examples in the early Kiwani works, and bringing um, visual novel characters into into a mo moving animation medium was something they excelled at, and they quickly found out how to do it right. So Clan in 2007, Canon in 2006, A in 2005. And yes. And Kyoani also excelled at offering Nichijoke style work, or at least uh, putting emphasis on the ordinary lives of the characters. And the, their first independent work they have worked on is uh, the work called Full Metal Panic Fumofu. This is based on a, a military sci-fi light novel, but then, um, but then the what happens in this Fumofu adaptation is basically normal com school life comedy uh, without any mecha that that should appear in the first place, but it didn't. <laughs> So this is an odd one out from the uh, Full Metal Panic series and deal with the ordinary lives that the characters value uh, in the original series. Um, the original series um, starts as a sort of a school life comedy, but then leads into um, the extraordinary war um, to basic to fight against the evil organization using Mecha. And this contrast worked very well in this work, but then Kyoani focused on the the ordinary side of the side of the life and created a really interesting series, um, doing doing non-military side of the military sci-fi novel. The other ones, Lucky Star, I think it's the most typical Nichijoke you can find. At least it defined the genre. Um, basically, four girls talking about random things, doing basically having a good time in their school lives. 
And this format is will be replicated later in, in the year, in the decade. And Haruhi also had an element of that with the ep um, episode 9 slash 14 slash 28, depending on how you count them. Um, this uh, episode called Sunday in the Rain um, only depicted the, um, or the most ordinary day they can experience by the most extraordinary characters, including aliens and the, the people from future and so on. And the emphasis on the, the details of the, these ordinary, ordinary days were sort of, to some extent, obsessive in this, in this um, single episode. And Keon did a similar format, but then sort of combining the atten the detail and the um the Nichijoke style of Lucky Star with And this solidified Kyoani's position as a sort of a studio that um truly cares uh, puts so much attention on the cute girls of living their moment in visually pleasing um um, appeal. The Nichijou and Tamako market, the Nichijou, well, it's in the name, but it's nothing but ordinary, but it's Nichijou. And Kyoani experimented with, experimented with these works and um, made, a, made a successful um, series, one after the other. And as I mentioned, this Nichijouke trend exploded in two, 2010s, like some some of the works are like these uh the F lucky star and kaon format exploded and there were so many works that happened during around 2015. and these works uh, boils down to this one phrase cute girls doing cute things ultimate form they even have like zero male character whatsoever and the cute things they deal with is maybe school life, maybe camping, maybe eating, maybe eat, maybe cooking, maybe music, etc., etc. They're quite a lot of range. But then, when you think about cute girls doing cute things, the cute girls part is kind of easy. You just put make five six girl characters and put them in but then making them cute there are a lot of ways to do it and my one of the one answer to the question i came up with was um sort of the romance or rom-com series where uh the character is in develops a relationship uh with the main character and sort of the progr the the progression of the the, the romantic relationship during the work. And the, vi the visual novels usually show this trend, especially after when you go into the, the character-specific roots and uh, rom-com genre as well, showing the char revealing character's cute side during that um, section. But then most of the romance works revolved around heterosexual um, relationships most of the time. And, but then Nichijouke works usually do not have a male character, at least not in a central position. How on earth do you do a romance in a Nichijouke series? There's only one answer. Well, two answers actually. Um, either uh, have, have a similar relationship in among the characters or do the doujinshi way and make a whole book on that with an original male character and do the same either way then then you might be thinking you can't just call nichijoke series yuri not everything is yuri you're right not everyone considers these works to have yuri elements um i'll talk about why this sort of um subjectivity occurs when you ask someone if is this a yuri is this yuri series some say yes some say no if you ask me it's probably going to be yes so series like these three are they yuri or not some say there's no intimate relationship between them so it's not yuri series 
they are friends and that's it yes it's true that um but the but the elements that this these works deal with is um the development of relationship among the among the characters and this slow and gradual development of friendship between the girls are enough to some people to consider them as yuri my personal opinion is that you can experience yuri without seeing the actual depiction of um sort of intimate relationships oh oops went too far um you may heard of the phrase yuri goggles that yuri otakus can look everything consider everything yuri at some point um when you focus on the the development of relationships you tend to notice the similar things in other works thereby considering them as a yuri relationship in a way yuri otaku is not necessarily concerned about what happens on the screen but more about the suggestions that's there in the screen to imagine the relationship so fans is overseer um among the 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 female fandom of anime in japan at least there's this interesting distinction of how you approach the work what i mean is uh, these two terms fujoshi and the yume joshi i think fujoshi is easier to understand in that uh female otakus tend to use um this term to describe someone who appreciates male male to male rela male religion relationships between men in fictional infections so sort of bl boys love whether they are canon or not then yume joshi or a self shipping in english lingo um means um fans who generally prefer self insertion of themselves when shipping or when uh, enjoying the work otomege is a tr the prime example of the self insertion that happens when you appreciate the work So I think there are two modes of appreciation um to towards a work. One is to observe the what happens um uh, between two characters. If you if yourself is not if you are not in the fictional realm of the work, then you might not then you're not portraying the, yourself into the work. And so, so this distinction in the theme, uh, the Yume Joshi Fujoshi distinction is kind of interesting to see um, the different modes of appreciation. But then the, it's less clear cut in Yuri fandom, and both modes seems to exist. The re the the reason is that um, because the Yuri fandom is a little bit more diverse in that. There are fans like myself who is um male, at least I consider myself male, and and on the other side there are um so many uh, so many female fans who um who are sometimes heterosexual, sometimes who sometimes they identify themselves as um lesbian or bisexual. So um this sort of wide range of fans tend to have less clear-cut um, modes of appreciation among even though you're looking at the same thing so quite quickly but concluding remarks on the yuri why this yuri thing even happened so the development leading up to nichijoukei anime have um uh with with the contribution from kyoani and other works and the shift um shift of shift from visual novel to social games um this format of nichijoke created works that only has um female characters and appreciating the the relationship development in these works um made 
made fans realize that these development uh, relationship development is um, interesting to watch, or at least that's one way to appreciate the work. And these cute girls doing cute things. Um, by watching um, watching enough of them, you tend to appreciate this development, and then s start to see this sort of uh, intimacy among the characters, and therefore fans sort of opening their eyes to appreciate. Um, such relationship, if that if I'm making myself coherent coherent enough. So I'm using this term enlightenment, not the most appro appropriate word, but um, fans basically started appreciating these um, re uh, relationship, and once you see it, um, you t you start to see them in other other contexts in other works, in with other other set of characters so because because fans started to see these kind of um relationship um and appreciate them um the market uh, realized the need uh, realized the production side realized um yuri at least um is a popular genre therefore there were a lot of works um of rebooting the the S novel or Marimite line of um, all Christian girls and them having intimate relationship within the school. You can see them in Citrus. Yagate, uh, Yagate Kimi ni Naru is a bit different, but in similar direction. And yeah. And the other side was the Nichijou K sort of series continued to be popular, but then these works um, started including these kind of um, suggestions that fans can um, build up on to imagine um, a closer relationship. Um, I think Yurukan is one of the one of the best examples in that. Um, they, it's it's a normal um, sort of camp out themed. Um, club activity series, but then the, the attention to detail in the relationship, relationship development among the characters are sort of highly detailed in, and easier to imagine uh, how, how they can have, um, how to suggest the possibility to, of such relationship. And resu resulting that um, the fan base increased, and the fa as a fan activity, there are a lot of um, works um, dealing with the Yuri relationship of, say, idol anime, Yurikan. I think you can find Yurikan, Yuri, Doujinshi quite a lot. So then, I mentioned I'll talk about what comes after this. And to do that, I think I have to ex I have to talk about uh, one concept: multi-layered orientation, uh, or how the media mix affects um, how we perceive the stories, and also Idol Animus and Yuri, which I'll talk about later. And so yes, um, there's this um interesting anal analytical work on what who's who otaku is by uh, Tamaki Saito uh, titled Sento bi shoujo no seishin bunseki or psychoanalysis of battle girls um analysis on into why otaku's love uh, battle girls um what what he means is that uh, sort of um um bi shoujo characters who um participate in a war basically or fight combat uh, like uh, Ayanami, they Ayanami on this cover, or any kind of um, characters who participate at, to fight. Um, Evangelion is the great example, and he em he emphasized on sexual desires and how it um, plays out to appreciate um, these characters. It has problems, but it has interesting concept called um, multi layered orientation. Basically, what he's saying is that um, otakus tend to uh, read into layered um, contexts um, from the, what happens on the screen 
to what the what the what the anime director has been doing in the past and his style and how the voice actors have um their own sort of um Mm, the voice, the who the voice actors are, and how, uh, who, between them, who who are um friends and uh, that sort of context, um, he sa- he says that otaku's um appreciate these layers at once when you when you watch when you watch a work, and simultaneously appreciating these multiple factors um m- makes the characters feel real. And therefore, having um, sort of of uh, sort of realizing the character r- real, it's a hard concept to explain, but um, the appreciating multiple layers section bit of the things can be seen in the otaku industry of of now, because the media mix projects are exploding in in the range um these days uh, contents launch um the social games anime uh live action um sta- stage plays and lots of medium at once and to have sort of decentralized canon because all of them happens at the same time and they all, all of them are considered the core of the story and they also uh, generate contents uh in different formats continuously and thereby diversifying the source of money that they can they can gain the examples would be um shoujo kageki uh review starlight ban banduri uh d4dj which was recently released then assault really which also recent uh yeah then, on top of this media mix trend, there are um, idol anime that that's worth mentioning. In twenty tens, there were numerous, numerous uh, amount of idol idol anime um, in this decade, both male and female idols, even trans idols in some works. Um, and these contents are usually had on social games. Uh, on top of the anime and and other medium, and contributed to the boom. And these kind of, uh, because of the simultaneous launch and the width of the media mix, the the formats kind of diversified and uh, contributed to the wide wider range of media mix projects. Like um, to give us some examples, uh. All of them are idol animes, at least to me. Zombieland Saga was pretty effective in the West as well. But um, what I'm getting at with the idol anime thing is that 2.5 dimensionness of the content. Um, this this term is usually used in um, um, I think this term started among the female female fandom about uh, Prince of Tennis musical, which was an live action stage play adapta- musical adaptation of a uh, Tenipuri manga which it itself became a sep- um, popular content as itself co- being called Tenimu and these contents uh, usually deal with um the the 2.5 dimension be- meaning between the three dimensional and two dimensional so fiction uh, fictional anime and the live action and something in between, and the layer of the characters, um, it's usually intracanon, semi-canon, or sometimes headcanon. Fictional layer of in, uh, the interaction of characters uh, among the fictional layer, and the second layer um, is the interaction between the actors and or voice actors. In this uh, teni teni pretty case, uh, it's going to be the actors who are um acting the characters and these are real life and the their personal um interactions among the casts and also other casts um tend to have um or some otakus tend to um appreciate 
uh, enjoy uh, seeing the the personal side of the actors. Um, the voice actor Otaku is a huge, huge um, set of a fandom by itself. And these are not these interactions are not necessarily canon, or because it's basically not it's outside of the the fictional work that they are acting, but definitely real. Oops, wrong one. And I think there's a layer between the two. Um, the interesting term yuri ego is a thing in Japan, and some someone made a dictionary wiction, article about this its definition. A slang lesbian behavior feigned by female voice actors pandering to fans. Um, this itself is very problematic concept, uh, especially if it if it is um done as a business sort of uh, direction or like the, the promotional direction that they how they want to sell uh, how they want to popularize the voice actors but these um actions of sort of uh lesbian behavior among the voice actors plus the fictional intimacy that happens in the work that they are acting will provide the audience to have an overwhelming context and based on the the multi-layered um orientation you by um in, by appreciating to uh, multiple layers of context you start to feel the character real um the 2.5 dimension thing these are from this one is from the uh the Top left is review Starlight actors who are also voice actors for the artwork. I start really left bottom, same same deal. And this one is D4DJ recently released. Um, they are also voice actors. And this one's Idol Master. And voice actors tend to do um have this um side of um the job, basically. But um, this two point five dimensional elements are there. And it contributes to providing more context and providing more more suggestions to imagine um, intimate relationship between characters. So the widened medium, I think I mentioned it before. And I think what will happen is that um, idol anime will continue to be popular, and more more projects will come come to the market. And the medium mix projects will definitely um, continue as a trend, but then at some point it will flood the market, um, because because the width and the depth of the contents it will there's a limit, and because people have only limited disposable time to use on a certain content, um, at some point it will it will have an effect to um, effect for these works to um, diverge into smaller categories and yeah I think that's about it um I flipped through a lot of things at, in a short period of time so if you have questions or comments you can I think we have we'll have an interview session after this so we can talk about that there so throw away th Throw questions at me via comments or Discord or I'm not sure if I can take a look at this Twitter, but yeah. So that's it from me on the slides. Thank you very much. Um yes. Sorry, I'm not used to this um distant um remote um lecture thing. I haven't let's, done it in the let's discipline. try that again. Uh Wataru, can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Okay, we had a now I can hear you. bit yeah. of a sound problem here, but we've mm. got you online now. Uh thank you so much for the uh very enlightening 
uh, show that you gave and about questions you already said. But if uh, anybody has questions that they would like to ask Vataru or uh, comments about this show, you can of course uh, send them over Twitter or but if you want them in the studio, use the YouTube chat or the Studio Kysymykset channel in our Discord. Mm -hmm. And there were a few comments and questions that I would actually like to raise uh, straight off the top. Uh, the first one mm -hmm. uh, was about uh, the distinction between uh, Yuri and Shoujo Ai. So uh, some of the uh. theories <laughs> that you gave as examples mm -hmm. in the YouTube chat, people pointed out that they would uh, more uh, they would rather categorize them that, as Shoujo Ai than Yuri. Uh, so mm -hmm. how do you feel about the distinction between these two? Um, first of all, I think I have to, um, clarify that the term shoujo ai is a thing, um, mostly among the English-speaking, uh, um, fandom. Um, to me, as a Japanese speaker and having, um, enjoyed the content, uh, in Japanese language and, uh, and the, and the fan, fan community of Japanese speakers most of the time, um, I think I've never heard this term in the Jap in the uh, in the in that fandom, and usually I when I when I talk about these um, works, um, I think they are usually categorized as a yuri, and the shoujo I term is less used. I can understand how the the term works, so but I think the distinction might not be as clear to me um, than the 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 question might might assume yeah if there's a distinction i think it will be an interesting comparison to do um between the the yuri and sort of the other term some similar term would be um lezu in japanese then the shoujo -ai yuri distinction might be something interesting to look at okay thank you uh that is a uh... In my opinion, a very good answer. I have no real understanding of the distinction between those terms myself. Um, a few other questions that we actually got right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And one that I thought of earlier about, the, uh, like, you mentioned uh, Yaoi a bit. And uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Fujoshi, there's this... Uh, discussion sometimes that I've heard that there can be no, uh, in quotation marks, friendship between males because it's always romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see the same mm -hmm. uh, feature in, in, in Yuri fandom that uh, friendship between girls always becomes romantic after you become entrenched in the Yuri fandom? Mm, I think there's a certain similar element um especially among um, the, the very hardcore, uh, hardliner Yuri Otaku in that you see every relationship as a Yuri. <laughs> some some people even say things like uh, Yuri relationship among male characters, which I don't really understand what they're talking about. <laughs> but um, um, I think there's a similar element to it. I, to me, I think Yuri and the, the Fujoshi um, Yuri and um, BL or boys love genre is similar in format, similar in direction, just dealing with um, different characters. Okay, thank you. Uh, we actually discussed this with you already earlier and it was asked from uh, the audience as well. So I'll bring this up now. Uh, how do you see the future of the Yuri genre? Where will it go? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The question was actually framed in Discord just now. Do you believe that uh, so-called honest Yuri, uh, not just fan service, uh, will resurface during this uh, idle uh, timeline? <laughs> or do you think that it will reach a similar sort of popularity? How do you see that? Uh, so the... Could you repeat the first? first uh, so the um, future so of... The uh, Yuri's genre. Where do you think it's going, and do you believe that the uh, sort of uh, honest Yuri, just not just fan service, but actual like Yuri content that you just told us about, uh, will gain popularity or resurface? How do you feel about that? 
Mm, I think on the Yuri, um, among the Yuri manga, there are, or I think the future of Yuri, there are several directions they can take. Um, I think the one of them would be um sort of hybridize hy hybrids of something and Yuri, mm -hmm. and um, so these days um one of the one of the major uh, sci-fi uh, publisher in Japan, um, Hayakawa Shobo, uh, has been working on um, Yuri and S uh, sci-fi mm -hmm. into one, <laughs> and they have published several novels on um, dealing with the dealing with the theme, and they, I think they had a one one anthology here, okay. um, basically an uh, anthology of Yuri themed sci-fi, and huh. they're trying to define define it as a new genre. Okay, so so it and other would mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of similar to like um, perhaps gay fiction in in Western uh, uh, mm -hmm. tropes that has kind of like intertwined with other genres, so that you can have like gay or or feminist sci-fi. Do you feel that it's mm -hmm. kind of uh, moving towards that direction? I think yeah, um, sort mm -hmm. of intertwining with other genres as mm -hmm. will certainly happen, and I'm not sure if it's in novels, if it's in games, but this intertwining will certainly happen. I think, and uh, the the pop gaining popularity of the non fan fan service Yuri mm -hmm. was it was it the question? Yeah, um, I think it's hard to um deny the fact that Yuri. Um, genre, um, sort of incorporated this um, direction at least um, in the recent recent works. So um, making making truly something that um, that doesn't have the element might be difficult. But then at the same time, I think there's a direction to deal with more difficult and um, more social um, themes of the of the female to female relationship especially um among the i think the citrus uh, and netsuzo trappu was one of the less um uh, it's fan servicey but then the themes they dealt with was um a little bit different from the at least the marimita tropes okay so these sort of uh width might increase all right uh there's actually been a few more comments and questions uh, while we were discussing this. Thank you so much for the informative mm -hmm. answer, by the way. Uh, about the shoujo AI that we discussed, there's uh, mm -hmm. been some comments that, uh, especially in the West, GL has mm -hmm. maybe uh, uh. taken over, the same as uh, BL has maybe taken over for Yao usually in the West. Mm -hmm. uh, is that mm -hmm. uh, your experience as well? I think yes, the this GL term is certainly more popular, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's used synonymously with Yuri and GL, maybe mm -hmm. like Yuri slash GL. Okay. But um, I think the GL term might gain more popularity, at least as a sort of a, the other option to use to describe these kind of works. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a bit of a historical question, also. Uh... Azumanga Daio, uh, sort of a slice oh. of life from uh, 2002, mm. I think. Um, how does that factor into the like historic timeline? <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, very good question. I think um, Nichijouke itself is, if you, if you try to find um, explain the Nichijouke um, history, I think. It will date back to some somewhere around that time. Mm -hmm. um, Lucky Star is similar, at least the manga manga is at around a similar time. Mm -hmm. um, so this sort of um, and I think I think one of the factors about Nichijouke is that the earlier works were tend to be a format of comedy manga, and I think Lucky Star definitely had that element as manga dial in similar similar mm -hmm. direction. I think. Um, but then I think the Nichijou K as a term gained popularity um, because the these works um, tended to shift away from um, comedy per se and became on it became as its own sort of yeah. genre of basically K 
cute girls doing cute things sort yeah. of deal. <laughs> um, so I think th- there's definitely a shift around that time, but I haven't looked into it in more detail, to be honest. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm not actually personally familiar with this term, but I'm sure you might know the uh, Yuri Eigyo has uh, oh, especially... Okay, you can maybe explain <laughs> what it is to me and uh, possible other yeah. listeners who don't know as well, but I'll ask a question first. The Yuri Eigyo has, uh, it seems to be more prominent in the VTuber world more and more. Oh. Uh, h- have you like seen this or have you, have you, are you familiar with this and what, how do you feel about it? Is, is this uh, your experience or what's your take? Mm. I think the VTubers definitely have this element um, mm-hmm. among the, among the live streams. I think they usually um, visit, visit other, other VTubers on um, streams and such. And I think there's that element. But then to me, um, this Yuri Eigyo, sort of this, um, or sometimes other people call it business Yuri, or that sort of deal. Um, uh, n- now actors, I know what, what uh, it is. Were, okay. <laughs> sort of, um, <laughs> um, I think these um, elements were or- originally among the sort of um, the Seiyu um, fandom mm-hmm. and how the how the voice actors catered to um, their fans through sort of um, uh, having show- showing um, the very intimate friendship um, among the among the among themselves. Ah, and yeah. I think these elements translated into VTubers solely because the VTuber genre itself is sort of combination of um, live streamers like Twitch or Nico 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 Namahoso, mm-hmm. Nico Nico Live, or and the sort of the Seiyu genre um, tropes. And combining that into one as a VTuber genre is, I think, what happened with the, the popularity of uh, VTubers, at least in Japan. Okay. Thank you. I think that's a uh, very interesting and may- maybe a take that you don't see in the West as well, uh, or, or mm. as clearly, since we don't have uh, such a clear view maybe of the Seiyu culture and situation, yeah. unless you are definitely... actively following it. Mm-hmm. It's definitely less accessible, um, the Seiyu fandom, mm-hmm. but then VTuber made it sort of international. I, I see a lot of um, English speaking fans um, throwing super chat at Japanese VTubers mm-hmm. these days. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the VTuber uh, phenomenon itself has risen rather uh, hugely lately, at least yeah, as far as I know. Indeed. Okay. Um, would you? Uh, categorize yourself as a male Yuri fan? Mm, I think I do, yeah. Okay, so so a sort of a Yuri otaku. Um, how do you mm-hmm. feel about, like, um, at least uh, from what I've seen, there's uh, sometimes uh, perhaps not a stigma, but a sort of a social uh, status among among maybe Yuri otaku and uh, the idea of especially how you in your show talked about the, the being a fly on the wall or a houseplant and just, just listening in <laughs> that it, it's sort of like a, a uh, peeper, peeping sort of uh, view of the, of the girls doing girly things. But um, what's your <laughs> take maybe on the, uh, like being, being a male Yuri Otaku, how, how do you see um, the, the male Yuri Otaku uh, scene itself and maybe how it relates uh, to the outside world as well? This is a very large question, um, I think, but... <laughs> um, I think there's definitely an element of hesitation or maybe guilt, depending on how, how serious it would be, mm-hmm. um, of loving these kind of works. Um, and being male at the same time mm. and seeing um the yuri fandoms especially in the doujinshi events in japan you see a lot of um authors and fans of uh female of uh, uh, female fans and authors and them appreciating appreciating these works sometimes have an element of um self expression in a way that um some of them are uh, are and possibly be a, a lesbian or bisexual um, mm-hmm. 
sexual minorities. And there's certainly an element of that. And loving medium of from from these authors as a male mm-hmm. definitely has an hesitation. But then at the same time, um, um, appreciating works um, is kind of hard to stop. <laughs> of course, uh, yeah. Especially being an otaku. Mm-hmm. And I think what at least personally, what I'm trying to be is um, to be respectable of the work. It, it's not re- just just about Yuri or um, the fiction itself, but mm-hmm. then um, keep in mind that these kind of elements do exist. And that's kind of the self-justification I'm doing, mm-hmm. at least um, to, to appreciate um, yeah. these works, at least. Yeah. I, I see that as a good uh, way of, of course, appreciating any any work is to try to be mm-hmm. respectable about the work itself as, as far as that is possible. And especially uh, as a male Yuri Otaku, you come from an outside view perspective. So especially in those mm-hmm. cases, I see the uh, view uh, as long as you are respectable of the work and uh, the, the creators of the work, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to approach at least. But I do agree that mm. there is probably a, a strong sense of hesitation easily in because you are kind of stepping into uh, a world that is outside your own, sort of. Not sure how to explain my idea. Not even sure yeah, how to explain it in so Finnish. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think the, I think one of this, um, the easier thing for me is that um, one the ma- the major fandom I I'm usually in is Idolmaster. You might you might f- uh, you might feel it from my slides, but uh, mm-hmm. um, that game has both of the both of the two worlds, which is kind of interesting that in that fandom has Yuri appreciating fans and also um, r- heterosexual romantic relationship appreciating girls, uh, I mean fans, mm-hmm. and they kind of co-exist um, in parallel sort of sometimes intersecting, but okay. so I think that kind of fandom is easier to live in at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um... For yourself, uh, if we look into mm-hmm. the future of of Yuri from 2020 so onward, what are you maybe wishing or hoping to see? What's your best timeline that we could get? Hmm. I think what I would love to see is um because now the VR format is um, becoming very popular or at least more accessible to end consumers, Mm -hmm. I would like to see a sort of VR games or VR something that deals with Yuri's themes. I think the earlier quote I had about like trying, wanting to become a plant port, I think that would be realized in VR. So that, that's something might be, that might be interesting. (laughs) Okay. Let's wait and see if we get that. Uh, I think I've covered all the questions we got. Uh, do you have something that you would okay. still like to uh, point out or maybe like give uh, reading or watching uh, recommendations for the watchers? Recommendations. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I think the recent works, Yagate Kimi ni Naru was very well done as a Yuri series and having uh, elements of many of the... Um, Many of the themes revolving around the Yuri relationship. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something you. Um, it's it's the one to start if it, if it's from the recent works. All right. And the other would be I think Liz uh, Liz and the Blue Bird from Kyoto Animation. Mm-hmm. Um, that itself could be Yuri. Some people say it's not, but then the sheer amount of attention towards detail and the relationship development through told through um, very small movements of characters mm-hmm. and the detail I think is something you can look you can appreciate even even without the Yuri context okay thank you those are really good recommendations and that's one for me as well I've only seen one of those um, <laughs> thank you so much Wataru for your very interesting program and the great discussion that we had 
uh, and especially thank you from for doing this all the way from uh, Japan, Tokyo. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I liked the desk on and moved back to Tokyo. I still wanted to do it, so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I am. So it's it's great that we could get you <laughs> on, and uh, it's really great that we got this to happen and everything went smoothly. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll let you off the hook for now. Um, we will continue the program in about 10 minutes with Huti and uh, the Showa period of anime. And I'll actually switch okay. to Finnish now and uh, go through a few things with our listeners. But thanks once more, Vataru. <laughs>